All right, hello and welcome to the Adobe Student Channel. Uh, my name is Terry White. We're going to take a look at a quick Photoshop tip tutorial technique for remove, a different take on removing a subject from the background, like getting something out of your picture. Uh, could be a person, could be an object, could be an X, could be whatever it is, getting it out of your picture uh, in a quick, easy way to do this. And uh, Andy, thanks. I'm glad you like my work, and hopefully I can teach you some more of my work right now. So what I'll do is I'll switch over to the computer, and best way you can see what the challenge is. Now the challenge is uh, we want to get him out of the picture. We want her to remain in the picture. And of course, this could be accomplished uh, several different ways. Luckily, they're not touching. Luckily, you know, there's no overlap where like she's running in front of him. That would make it a little harder. Uh, so there is a bit of a gap between them. But if you don't want to do a lot of cloning, you don't want to do a lot of patching, you don't want to do a lot of work to remove um, this person from the background, but keep the rest of the background, this tip may help you. So let me show you what the challenge is and why the way you might be thinking of doing it may, may not work as quickly. So for example, let's say I were to grab uh, like a lasso tool and I just want to quickly just roughly select him. So I'm just going to go ahead and here you guys can see me do it. I'll just, um, here on my Wacom Cintiq, I'll just come around here and just roughly grab him. Not even going to go up, up the arm, doesn't matter. Go under the legs, come all the way back around. Go around him and very carefully, not touch her. And then go around and around his head. Okay, so I get that quick selection around him. Let me hold down the shift key. And add in that little piece around the head that I missed. All right, so I got that. I got him. So now we know that there is content aware fill. Content aware fill has been in Photoshop now for several versions. And the way, the quickest way to access it is if you're on a background, like I am, I'm on the background, if you look in the layers panel, then you just hit your delete key or backspace key on your keyboard. If you're on a layer, you're going to hold down shift delete. Uh, and if you don't, if that's not working for you for whatever reason, the keyboard shortcut's not working, just go up to edit, choose fill, and make sure the selection is content aware. So that's all, um, that's all delete does is it just brings up the fill box. So I could have gone up to edit and chose fill and got the same exact thing. So as you can see, it says content is going to be content aware. And that's great. That's what I want. I wanted to just use the surrounding area to fill in where I just selected. The problem is when I click OK, it'll think for a minute, it'll do it. And then, <laughs> then I get that. Actually, that's a little worse than my previous test of this. Because she's so close to him that Photoshop doesn't know what to not get. It, it thinks everything around him must be fair game because you told me to do this. So what we have to do is find a way to tell Photoshop she's off limits. Don't pull her into that area to use her to fill in that spot, and especially don't do it in such a bad way where she's, this looks like a, if you're a science fiction buff, this looks like a transporter accident where she's got reassembled all kinds of bad ways. All right, so we don't want that to happen. All right, so anyway, now let's go ahead and undo that because that, that won't work that way. We got to do something first. I'm going to deselect Command D. Deselect the uh, object, we're going to basically start from scratch. So what I'm going to do is first and foremost, I need to hide her from Photoshop. Now, in order to do that, I need a layer mask. In order to make a layer mask, I need a layer. So I could either duplicate this layer or I can just make this layer, this background a layer. So I'm just going to make the background a layer. I'm just going to go ahead over here on the right hand side. Click the little padlock icon, that will turn the background into a layer. Okay, so now that's a layer, I can have a layer mask. One of the quickest ways, and this is a really old way of doing this, most people, most younger people don't even know it's there or you, you run upon it by accident, is quick mask. And I could use all kinds of ways of selecting her, but I really only, I don't need, it doesn't need to be precise, I just need to select that general area 
can tell Photoshop that this is off limits. So I'm going to hit the letter Q for Quick Mask. And you notice that the layer turned red? That means you're in Quick Mask mode. So if you're ever wondering why things are working weird, go look at your layer panel and see if you're, you might have hit Q by mistake and you're in Quick Mask mode. All right, now in Quick Mask mode, I can uh, grab a paintbrush and I can grab a bigger brush. And I, it's painting red. No matter what my foreground color is, I'm now masking. And all I'm doing is just literally filling this area in, don't touch him, filling this area in with red or masking. Now I could go between the legs and get that area there. It doesn't really matter uh, because it, it can use that area. I'm okay with that. Uh, but let's go ahead and just fill her completely in. There we go. Make sure you fill the areas in. Make sure you don't leave any gaps because those gaps will become your enemy later. All right. And there we are. We completely masked her up. All right. So any way you want to select her is fine. I just thought I'd show quick mask. Now, how do I get out of quick mask once I'm done painting? Just hit the letter Q again. And now that becomes a selection. So that's what the quick mask is for. It's just painting in a selection so that you get a selection. All right, now that I got that, the next thing is, is to tell Photoshop everything that's selected, ignore it, turn it off, hide it, get rid of it, you know, for now. We'll come back and bring it back later. So to do that, I'm gonna go over to the layers panel. In the bottom of the layers panel, there is the layer mask icon, add layer mask right there. And I'm gonna um, go ahead and click it because what that will do is hide what I just selected. She's not deleted, she's just hidden. So therefore, anything that's hidden, Photoshop can't use. It can't see it. It doesn't know she's there anymore. Therefore, now if I go back and do a content aware fill, it can't use her because it can't see her. So she's just hidden temporarily behind that mask and we'll get her back when the time comes. Okay, so now let's go back to the uh, lasso tool and let's go ahead and make that selection which I should have saved <laughs> around him. Uh, but that's okay, I'll make it again. It doesn't have to be that precise. Um, let's go ahead and get as close to him as we can. We don't really need to touch because if you touch the edges, then that can create other issues. But we're just going to get really close to him, as close as we can, without touching. And we're going to go all the way around there. And I'm just going to touch this hand a little bit. I'm just going to hold down the shift key and just add a little bit more selection on there. Okay, so now we got our selection around him. Here's the next thing. You last, the last thing you left off on was the mask. So technically, the mask is still selected. If you do it on the mask, nothing will happen. So just make sure we go back to the layer. Now we're working on the layer again. All right, so now I need to content aware fill again, but if I hit delete, because I'm on a layer, it's just gonna delete it. It's not, it's just gonna be a blank space there. It won't bring up content aware fill unless I do shift delete or go up to the edit menu and just choose fill. So shift delete brings up content aware, just like it did the first time, and now it's okay for me to go ahead and click OK because it can't use her if she's not there. And so it will make the, the content aware based on everything else. It went over and grabbed some tree way over on the right hand side because it said, hey, this area here is off limits. Not going to touch any of that. So I can deselect. He's gone now. I can go back to the layers panel and I can hold down the shift key and click that layer mask to turn it off. She's back. That's it. You can use content aware fill even when things are next to each other and that way you can still pull in all the other areas you want without pulling in things you don't want if you hide them first. You hide them behind a layer mask and that way you'll get everything you want. Now, I can still tweak it all I want now because he because um, he's gone and for example I don't like the way this little branch is hanging down here so because it looks too too much like the other one so now I can go oh hang on 
go back to the layer, there we go. Now I can go in and just, for example, patch that out and tweak it a little bit to get it just right. But now you've got the ability to control, yes, control content aware fill and choose the parts that it won't use by just masking them out, temporarily hiding them. And then you can have a field day. So if you got a lot, especially if you got a lot of intricate things you're trying to fill, surrounded by a lot of other things, that tip works beautifully. I just didn't want to grab anything intricate because of the time it would take me to select all the little pieces to mask out. But you get the idea. All right, that's it. I told you it'd be a quick one. I told you it would change your world if you do this kind of work. I didn't put that in there, but you get the idea. <laughs> this is a game changer for people that use Content Aware Fill, and especially if you're frustrated when you want to use Content Aware Fill and it's next to something you don't want to use. This tip will help you out tremendously. All right, guys, that's it. I'll be back tomorrow. I don't. I think I'm on the InDesign channel tomorrow around 1 p.m. Pacific time. Uh, we'll be talking about uh, EPUB versus PDF and the nuances between the two and why you should use one over the other, depending on what you're doing. All right, cool. Glad you guys love the tip and uh, feel free to go use it. <laughs> use it as much as you want. All right, cheers, everybody. Take care. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you tomorrow, 1 p.m. on the InDesign Facebook page. That's uh, facebook.com slash InDesign. 1 p.m. Pacific time, EPUB or EBUB, e EPUB, I shouldn't say ebook, EPUB versus interactive or PDF. Which one is the best way to deliver your content, especially if it's interactive content? All right, cheers, everybody. Thanks for watching. Catch you on the next one. Bye. Bye.